Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a fantasy, horror film from 2009, titled Thirst. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Song Hyun is a priest who volunteers at the local hospital, providing prayers, an ear for confession, last rites, and even some songs played with his flute. However he feels like he isn't doing enough, people keep dying of ev every day and he can only watch, so he asks Father Ro, a blind priest superior to Song Hyun to send him to the labs where they are experimenting to find a vaccine. Ro doesn't like the idea, nobody doesn't know what truly is going on in those laboratories and the Vatican doesn't approve of them, but he gives in after Song Hyun explains how important it is for him. When he arrives at the labs, Song Hyun is told of all the possible horrendous side effects that he may go through while being part of the experiment, but Song Hyun isn't scared and gives his consent to proceed. He spends his days in the labs playing the flute, reading, praying, writing letters, and playing volleyball with the other volunteers. A month later, his body is covered in blisters, and one afternoon, Song Hyun ends up vomiting blood in his room. He's immediately taken to the emergency room and given a transfusion, but the doctor's efforts are pointless, Song Hyun dies on the table. However, after he's covered with a sheet, the doctors are surprised to suddenly hear him pray, somehow, after his heart stopped, Song Hyun is still alive and his blisters are gone. Six months later, Song Hyun leaves the labs to return to his congregation, and lots of people are waiting for him at the door. The news of his recovery has spread and everyone believes him to be a miracle for being the only survivor of the experiment among 500 volunteers. He travels with his entire body bandaged up and stays that way while going back to his duties as a priest. It isn't until he goes to see the doctor that he takes them off, and the doctor confirms he's healed incredibly fast. Song Hyun still notices some differences in his body though, he's become strangely sensitive to sound and smell, which makes him feel dizzy and nauseous, but those aren't symptoms of Ev. Song Hyun starts being known as the bandaged saint, and people come to him believing he may heal them. One afternoon, he's approached by Mrs. Ra, who wants him to come and see her son Kang Woo who is very sick. When he goes to the hospital to offer his prayers, Song Hyun realizes he knows these people. He used to be friends with Kang Wu when they were kids. There's also Taeju, who Song Hyun thought was Kang Wu's sister, but actually, she was a kid that was abandoned at Mrs. Ra's house, so she took her in and raised her. Nowadays she's married to Kang Wu, although she doesn't look very happy about it. Some days later, once Kang Wu is feeling better, Song Hyun is invited over for dinner, and can't help feeling a little nauseous when he smells some blood, unknown to him, Taeju is on her period. Three other friends are also invited, Song Dae, a retired cop, Young Du, and his wife Evelyn. They spend the evening chatting and playing mahjong, although Song Hyun can't stop watching Taeju, especially when her husband grabs her to tickle her and accidentally drops her on the floor. She almost slaps him for it, but instead, she leaves the building and goes out for a run while barefoot. Once the night is over and everyone leaves, Taeju watches her husband sleep and pretends to stab his mouth with her thread scissors over and over. Meanwhile, Song Hyun returns to his place, but he doesn't go to bed until he's hit himself with his flute enough times to make up for the sinful thoughts he's been having about Taeju. The smell of his own blood makes him nauseous, and suddenly he starts feeling dizzy as well, overwhelmed by all the sudden sounds he is able to hear until he passes out on the floor. The next morning, he's woken up by the sensation of the sun burning his skin, so he decides to hide in the wardrobe until night falls. Hours later, once it's dark outside, Song Hyun comes out and discovers his body is covered in blisters again, so he has to bandage himself up to go to the hospital. There, he gives his blessings to a dying woman and touches her as he does so, accidentally getting blood on his fingertips that he can't help licking. Not being able to take it anymore, Song Hyun visits a patient that is in a coma next and drinks his blood directly from his foretube. This cures his blisters and allows him to take the bandages off again, it also means he doesn't need his glasses anymore. Scared by what he's becoming, he jumps off the window and lands on top of a car, but he's still alive and unhurt. On his way back home, he comes across Taeju, who couldn't sleep and has gone out for another barefoot run. She tries to run away when she sees him, but he quickly catches up with her and picks her up to put her in his shoes. Then he quickly goes away, not wanting to succumb to the temptation of her veins. The next day, Song Hyun has to wait for night to fall again before visiting Father Ro and asking for his advice. He proves he's a vampire now by making a cut on his chest and letting Ro insert his hand to touch his heart, and that cut closes and heals as soon as Ro takes his hand out. Song Hyun doesn't know what to do with these new urges he's going through, and Ro helps him by letting him drink from his arm. Song Hyun begins to go to every mahjong night at Mrs. Ra's house. One evening, when Taeju is about to go running barefoot again, Song Hyun stops her, and she takes the chance to give him back his shoes. She explains that she runs to get the feeling of getting away from the hell that is her household and that she's been waiting for him to rescue her since they were kids. Before he can stop himself, Song Hyun kisses her and the two of them get down on the floor to try to reach home base, but they're interrupted by Mrs. Ra, who orders Taeju to come back to take care of her husband and slaps her when she takes too long. A couple of days later, Taeju begins working as a volunteer at the hospital on Sundays, which is the day Song Hyun works there too. 
She waits for his mass to be over and together they find a room where the only patient is in a coma, so nobody will find them while they use one of the beds to get to know each other better. After they're done, Taeju wants to know how their relationship will progress, so Song Hyun decides she should know the truth now before she makes any decisions, but instead of telling her, he shows her what he is by drinking the comatose patient's blood. Taeju freaks out and runs back to her house, but Song Hyun follows her and enters the building through the bathroom window, cornering her there. He promises her that he hasn't killed anybody and says that being a vampire shouldn't be different from having any other kind of illness before picking Taeju up to take her away with him into a better life. But when he's about to jump off the window with her in his arms, he accidentally kicks off the toilet lid, getting the attention of Mrs. Ra, so Song Hyun runs away alone before he's discovered. Taeju watches him leave and notices how he's capable to break a street light in two with his super strength. The next day, Song Hyun is at the hospital, filling some bottles with the comatose patient's blood when he receives a call from Taeju, who wants to know how a person can become a vampire. A few hours later, they meet on the roof of the hospital and Song Hyun proceeds to show her all his powers, like healing himself after drinking blood, breaking a coin in two, and jumping from roof to roof with her in his arms. While carrying her around, Song Hyun notices some wounds on Taeju's thighs and assumes Kang Wu is mistreating her, which she confirms. But when she goes back to her place later, Kang Wu is surprised to see these wounds too and expresses his concern for her, thinking it was a patient with mental health issues that attacked her. Meanwhile, Song Hyun visits Father Ro, who tells him he should go back to the lab and ask for a cure. This is sadly impossible because such a long trip would expose Song Hyun to sunlight, so Father Ro asks him to give him some of his blood instead then. He wants to be a vampire to be able to see again before dying, but Song Hyun is so disgusted by this that he decides to renounce his vows and flee from the monastery. Mrs. Ra accepts giving Song Hyun a place to stay and he's given a mattress to put down in the basement, although he quickly replaces it with a wardrobe which he uses as if it was a coffin. Now he and Taeju can secretly meet down there more often, and Song Hyun keeps asking Taeju to run away with him and because Taeju refuses because she knows Mrs. Ra will leave the house and her business to her. Kang Wu begins noticing that Taeju isn't in bed with him during the night, so Mrs. Ra installs a door fastener on Kang Wu's bedroom and locks the couple there every night. This causes Taeju to start stabbing her thighs with her thread scissors while Kang Wu sleeps, and the smell of her blood is enough for Song Hyun to leave the basement and enter her room through the window. He sees her wounds and the scissors on the floor and assumes Kang Wu did it so he tries to kill him, but Taeju stops him. This doesn't mean she doesn't want him to do it though, they just need a better plan. Some days later, Song Hyun, Taejun, and Kang Wu go fishing in a prohibited area. While Kang Wu is busy with his rod, Song Hyun jumps on him and drags him into the lake to drown him. Kang Wu struggles in the water, trying to get out, but Song Hyun drags him back down until he cannot breathe anymore. Once Kang Wu is dead, Song Hyun returns to the boat and hugs Taejun to celebrate her newfound freedom, but their enthusiasm causes them to accidentally flip over the boat and Taejun falls to the water as well. The police and an ambulance arrive shortly afterward, and they take an unconscious Taejun away while Song Hyun jumps back into the lake carrying a giant rock that he puts on top of Kang Wu's body after hiding it inside of a sunk cabinet to keep it from floating to the surface. After answering the police's questions, Song Hyun goes to see Father Ro to confess what he's done, but all Ro cares about is becoming a vampire, so Song Hyun kills him with his own Swiss knife and proceeds to drink his blood. Then he wraps up the body and puts it in his car, driving it all the way to a cliff to toss the body far into the ocean. The police can't close the case until they find the body, and Taejun starts having hallucinations of Kang Wu appearing around her. The death of her son affects Mrs. Ra so badly that she starts drinking until she sinks psychosomatically into a completely paralyzed state. With her mom paralyzed and her husband gone, Taejun allows Song Hyun to sleep in her bedroom, and now they can spend even more time together, which is harder than it sounds because they are now both having hallucinations of Kang Wu taking revenge on them. Days pass and Taeju keeps taking care of her paralyzed mother, applying her makeup, washing her, and taking her out in her wheelchair so she can have some fresh air and sunshine. One afternoon, Young Du visits her alone because Evelyn is on a trip, and brings Taeju some money, claiming no woman should be alone before trying to take advantage of her. Taeju kicks him and tries to escape, but Young Du grabs her and forces her to stay and please him. By the time Taeju finally gets to leave night has fallen, and she comes across Song Hyun on the streets, who gets unhappy when he smells Young Du on her body. Some days later, Taeju and Song Hyun buy a cake and celebrate Mrs. Ra's birthday. Remembering that her mom never celebrated her birthday, Taeju slaps Mrs. Ra, and Song Hyun slaps her in return for disrespecting her mother. Taeju wonders who he thinks he is to hit her like that and accidentally lets it slip that Kang Wu had never hurt her, which enrages Song Hyun because that's the only reason why he agreed to kill him. Taeju disagrees and after saying she's sure he would have killed him anyway because of jealousy, she goes to cry to her mother about how scared she is, pretending to be a victim as well. Mrs. Ra may be paralyzed, but she can still move her eyes and hear everything is being said in front of her, so now she knows their little secret. 
After Taeju accuses him of cursing her family, Song Hyun gets even angrier and hits Taeju, tossing her to the side. Mrs. Ra starts convulsing then, so he gives her CPR until she calms down, and Taeju uses that chance to run into another room. However, it's easy for Song Hyun to catch up with her and capture her, deciding to listen to her pleas and kill her so she can reunite with her husband. Crying over what he did, he hugs Taeju and starts drinking her blood, but when he notices Mrs. Ra watching them, guilt and regret take over him. There's only one thing he can do now, feed Taeju with his own blood and transform her into a vampire too. Now the couple spends the day together inside Song Hyun's wardrobe in the basement and comes out during the night. While Song Hyun keeps himself busy painting the living room completely white to remember sunlight, Taeju prepares Mrs. Ra's meals, one of which ends up having a drop of her blood in it when Taeju accidentally cuts her finger. But one drop is still enough for Mrs. Ra to start moving one of her fingers after eating. The police are still on the case of Kang Wu's death, and one day they call Taeju and Song Hyun to answer some questions while connected to a lie detector. The two of them pretend they're only acquaintances that barely know each other, so when they're done, Song Hyun takes the car and Taeju takes a taxi so they don't raise suspicion. But Taeju can't help herself any longer, so she ditches the cab and calls one of the cops to ask him to pick her up under the excuse she has something to confess. When the officer finds her in the middle of the road, Taeju kills him, takes him to the woods, and drinks his blood before burying him there. When she returns home, Song Hyun tastes the blood on her lips and guesses she's been killing indiscriminately. He tells her off for it, reminding her he's supposed to be bringing blood from donors to feed them both without having to become murderers. As Song Hyun chases her from roof to roof, Taeju tells him she doesn't like his methods, she thinks killing people is more fun and the blood tastes better when drunk directly from the body. When she tries to break up with him, Song Hyun grabs her and drops her on the floor, hurting her while he reminds her she is the only thing he has in this life. He still refuses to let her kill people to drink however. After a couple of days, blisters begin to appear on Taeju's body and she can't drink donated blood because she vomits it, so Song Hyun decides to call the hospital doctor and ask him to come over for a checkup. This means Taeju feeds on him while Song Hyun tries to ignore the guilt that haunts him, but soon a distraction arrives, it's their friends, who have come over for Mahjong night. After hiding the doctor's body, the couple welcomes their friends, and together they have a fun night as usual, that is until they make a discovery, Mrs. Ra can say yes or no by blinking. She also shows them she can move her finger and starts pointing at Mahjong pieces with letters on them, this together with the blinking allow her to communicate to their friends the truth behind Song Hyun and Taeju, they were the ones that killed Kang Wu. Knowing what's going to happen next and not wanting to see it, Sang Hyu leaves the room as Taeju begins chasing her guests to kill them. However, guilt soon takes over, so he helps Evelyn hide in the closet before trying to stop Taeju, but she chokes him and drops him on the floor before going back to hunting. Sung Dae and Young Do both get killed and Taeju feeds on them until their necks don't drop any more blood. Song Hyun explains to her that this is because their hearts aren't pumping anymore, so she should cut their feet and hang them in the bathtub to let gravity do its thing. While they chat, Evelyn is in the kitchen, tied to a chair, but she manages to drop herself on the floor and grab a knife that fell earlier. After freeing herself, she goes after Taeju and stabs her with the same knife, but this of course does nothing. Song Hyun pretends to feed on it and kill Evelyn while Taeju is looking for a bigger knife so that she won't hurt her, then he tells Taeju that they need to leave the house before the cops arrive. They get in the car and bring Mrs. Ra with them, only stopping once by the camp of people that believed in the bandage saint so Song Hyun could feed on a woman for real. Then he spends the rest of the night driving while Taeju sleeps, making it to the middle of the countryside right before the sun is about to come out. When Taeju wakes up and notices there's nowhere to hide because she's stuck between an open field and a cliff, she freaks out and begins looking for a method not to die to the sun. She can't drive away because Song Hyun has broken the key, so she tries hiding in the trunk, but Song Hyun tears off the lid and throws it into the ocean. Next, she tries hiding under the car itself, but Song Hyun just moves it away. When she finally gives up, the couple sits together on the hood of the car and wait for the sun to burn them away while Mrs. Ra watches them die from the backseat. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.